Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. That breaking news coming from Ypsilanti. That is where Mayor Beth Basher just announced she is stepping down amid controversy over racist comments she made at a recent city council meeting. Make sure to stick with Local 4 and click on Detroit.com as we continue to learn more. Also breaking right now, Martha Ford is stepping down as the principal owner of the Detroit Lions. And as Jamie Edmonds reports, she is handing the reins to her daughter. Karen, big Lions news today. Leadership is changing, but it is staying within the Ford family as it has for six decades. Martha Firestone Ford is stepping down as principal owner of the Detroit Lions. Sheila Ford Hamp will succeed her mother as the team's principal owner and chairman. Martha Firestone Ford has led the Lions since 2014 when her husband, William Clay Ford, passed away. Now, since her mother took over, Sheila Hamp has been really involved and active in team leadership with the NFL for several years. She's been preparing for officially assuming this role. Martha Ford released a statement that reads in part, she's gratified for this family tradition, which started almost six decades ago and will continue now under Sheila's guiding hand. It is clear to me that Sheila will provide superb leadership and is fully committed to competitive excellence and community involvement. Now, Sheila Ford Hamp released a statement that reads in part, my mother has inspired all of us since taking on the leadership of the Lions over six years ago. She has been a tireless leader to our family, our team, and our community. Her smart decisions have given me a solid foundation to take the team forward. Now, there is a virtual press conference today with Sheila Hamp Ford. We will be there for that virtually, and we will bring you the latest coming up on Local 4 News at 5. Karen, back to you. All right, thank you, Jamie. Also breaking on this Tuesday, the nation's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, along with CDC Director Dr. Robert Redfield and other officials are currently testifying on the federal response to the coronavirus pandemic. Dr. Fauci just said that a COVID-19 vaccine could be ready by the end of this year or early in 2021. The hallmark of all really defining responses that we have to virus diseases if you look at the history of viral diseases, it is generally vaccines that put the nail in the coffin. One of those vaccines, and there are more than one, there are several that are moving along at various paces. One of them will enter phase three study in July. This is one that is already shown in preliminary studies, some very favorable response in the animal models that were developed. There will be others that will follow one month, two months, three months later. Although you can never guarantee at all the safety and efficacy of a vaccine until you actually test it in the field, we feel cautiously optimistic. Based on and you can watch the entire hearing on ClickOnDetroit.com. Also, make sure to stay tuned to Local 4. We'll have complete breakdowns of the hearing later on today at 4, 5, and 6. Also making headlines this afternoon because of the coronavirus, the University of Michigan has decided it will no longer host the 2020 presidential debate. The debate was originally scheduled for October 15th at the Chrysler Center in Ann Arbor. Now let's get out to Victor Williams, who is live this afternoon. And Victor, where is that debate now going to be held now that U of M is out of the picture? Well, Karen, this announcement came as quite the surprise to many of the people who are looking forward to that debate being held here at U of M. But instead, Biden is now going to be taking on President Trump in Miami. All of this comes after the higher ups at U of M concluded that it wasn't, quote, feasible to host the presidential debate as planned after the coronavirus pandemic. Biden will now take on President Trump at the Adrian Arsh Center in Miami, Florida. This will be the second debate hosted in the city of Miami, the first happening during the 2004 debate that took place at the University of Miami. And the next debate will remain in the southern region, taking place at Belmont University in Nashville, Tennessee. Reporting live in Ann Arbor, Victor Williams. Local four. Back to you, Karen. All right, we appreciate it. Thank you very much, Victor. New this noon, House and Senate lawmakers have revealed their return to learn plan for the upcoming school year. The plan calls for $800 per student for K through 12 for every school district. The money will provide districts with devices needed to expand connectivity and develop a digital curriculum. Plus, a one time payment of $500 will be given to teachers to help assist transition into distance learning. 
The plan we're unveiling today will provide the certainty to our local school leaders that is needed. It will also provide the peace of mind for our parents that they're desperately craving right now. And it will also ensure that every single child in our state has the healthy, vibrant education that they deserve. The plan will also include $75 million to cover costs for creating distance learning and that safe return to school plans. The Wayne County Health Division is launching a new program today to provide testing for COVID-19 antibodies that might help save lives. Wayne County residents will be able to take part in a drive-up diagnostic and antibody test program over at Garden City Hospital. Those who test positive for the antibodies will be able to donate plasma to potentially save someone else's life. The program is being paid for by the Federal CARES Act. We are closely monitoring the coronavirus case count here at home. And as of our last update on Monday afternoon, there were seven confirmed deaths from COVID-19. In total, we've lost more than 5,800 people to the virus. Michigan has more than 61,000 confirmed cases. This is up 179. As of Saturday afternoon, the official recovery total was 49,290. Now, on the national front, there is renewed concern as coronavirus cases continue to spike in several states. In total, more than 120,000 Americans have died from the illness. There are more than 2,300,000 confirmed cases in the U.S., and that's according to Johns Hopkins University database. As Joe Fryer reports, the virus does not appear to be slowing down. Arizona is seeing one of the largest increases in COVID-19 cases in the country. Numbers nearly doubling in the last 14 days with more than 2,000 new cases on Monday. Now with only 17% of hospital beds available in Phoenix, nurses on the front line say they're struggling to keep up. It's kind of scary and daunting. All as President Trump is scheduled to speak at this Phoenix megachurch later today. In a since-deleted post, church leaders boasted about a device they say can kill 99.9% .9 of the virus in minutes. Ionization of, of the air and it takes particulates out and COVID cannot live in that environment. But medical experts dispute that claim. Filtration technology in particular would not prevent COVID-19 transmission from person to person. Across the country, many states in the north and east have seen fewer new cases, while others in the south and west are seeing record numbers, with eight states amassing more than 1,000 new cases in the last 24 hours. With almost 3,000 new cases in Florida Monday, Miami's mayor is now requiring masks be worn in public spaces. Florida's governor says there's an increase in COVID-19 cases in people under the age of 45. The trend also seen in Texas, along with an average of 3,500 new COVID-19 cases every day. Back in Arizona, as hospitalizations rise, so does anxiety. I feel like the worst is yet to come. Another big concern here is testing. So far, Arizona's Department of Health says the state has tested shy of 600,000 people, one of the lowest testing rates in the country. Some have told us they've had to wait hours to get a test. Jill Fryer, NBC News, Phoenix. Let's take a quick look at our forecast with Brandon as we take a live look outside through our sky cam. There were some scattered showers this morning, but things are clearing up just a little bit. Yes, and it was a badly needed rain, a dry month of June thus far, Karen, so we needed every drip and drop. Right now we're dry and live look here in Ann Arbor where we have 74 degrees, 73, 74, depending on where you are, with a west-southwest wind, 11 to 18 miles an hour, and that will be the breeze gusting 20 to 25 at times, and that breeze does create some flooding concerns over on Harsons Island, just so you know. Other than that, we're going to be flirting with 80 degrees with clouds coming and going, but most of that wet weather gonzo. All right, Karen, that means we are setting up for more comfortable weather as we move ahead, and we've got that seven day ahead as well. All right, we'll check back with you in a couple minutes. Thanks, Brandon. Still to come this noon after coronavirus shutdown, some businesses are having trouble reopening. We'll share what a lot of them have in common and why it's very troubling. Next.